1765, during the Battle of Jaintong, the forces of the Qing dynasty were routed by the Gongbang Burmese army. Because the Qing had enjoyed easy victories against the previously weakened Burmese dynasty, the defeat at the Jaintong campaign proved to be a great shock. Governor Liu, in his embarrassment, committed suicide rather than face the emperor's wrath. Enraged, the Qinlong emperor declared that dealing with the Mian was now a matter of imperial prestige. To avenge this defeat, the emperor appointed Yang Yinju, an experienced frontier officer with long service in Xinjiang and Guangzhou. Yang arrived in the summer of 1766 to take command. After studying the situation, Yang decided that he would not invade through the Burmese Shanlands as Liu did, but to strike the Kongbaung kingdom directly. This was a drastic decision as the imperial orders were merely to settle the Sino-Burmese border issues and to keep the Gongbang dynasty from interfering with Qing interests. Instead, Yang's plan was to overthrow the Gongbang monarchy and place a Qing climate on the Burmese throne. An army of 25,000 infantry and 2,500 cavalry was assembled as spies were dispatched to get the support of Burma's Chinese minorities. 15,000 men of the Green Standard Army formed the core of his forces, and the rest was Yunnanese militia and Chinese Taishans. As the Qing marched down, they had heard that the kingdom was relatively undefended. The main Komon armies were still fighting in Ayotthaya, and their spies reported that the Burmese field army was less than 6,000 men and 500 cavalry, with the rest scattered across many garrisons. Yang thought it was the perfect opportunity, and the Imperial Army marched to the Burmese Shan city of Bamo. From there, they would move along the Iyawari River to the Burmese capital of Ava. When the Qing army arrived at Bamo, they were met by the Shan and Kachin militia, who after some defiance, quickly retreated. Bamo was transformed into a supply depot, and after leaving a garrison to guard it, Yang's forces followed the Iyawari River. The first real resistance came at the village of Gantong, where a fort remained defiant, flying the red and gold peacock flag of the Kongbaung dynasty. The fort was not particularly in the way of the Qing route, but it was dangerously close to the supply depot at Bamo, and thus the Qing armies resolved to take it. Having taken Bamo at ease, the Qing army decided to launch a full frontal assault. As the Green Standard troops pushed forward, a hail of musket and cannon fire greeted them. Startled by the sudden show of firepower, Yang pulled his troops back and then attacked again. Once again, Qing soldiers were cut down by Burmese musket and cannon fire. And after several more attempts, the Qing army decided to settle down for a siege. The stockade was led by Bala Minden, widely considered to be one of the finest officers of his generation. Furthermore, the veteran Burmese garrison included French-trained gunners of the Bayinji Regiment, made up of Burmese Christians of European descent. Although heavily outnumbered, the defenders stood their ground and repulsed repeated Qing assaults. Although some Qing commanders wanted to ignore the fort and march down the Iyawadi, Bala Minin's energetic defense of Gaontong made the Qing fear that leaving the fort unmolested so near the Bamo supply depot would be unwise and yet the fort showed no sign of falling and the defenders were even more motivated than ever. This deadlock did not favor the Qing, who were not prepared or equipped to fight in Burma or for that matter a longer campaign. The entire objective was to quickly move down and attack the Burmese capital while the Kongbaung armies were still occupied. Undersupplied and under-equipped, the Qing troops were struck by the tropical disease of northern Burma, cholera, dysentery, Malaria broke out in the imperial camps and thousands of men were brought down by it. According to one Qing report, in a garrison of 1,000 men, nearly 800 died from disease, although their spies had reported a sizable Chinese community in Burma. No one came to their aid. Worst of all, the Qing scouts reported hearing drums in the jungle. It turns out, the minimal resistance had been a trap. Because the Burmese had long suspected of the invasion and were prepared. Chinese-born Burmese in the Kongbaung military 
many of whom were descendants of refugees from the Qing conquest of China, counter-spied, and the Kongbang forces were fully aware of the Qing invasion. The king, Simbushin, had ordered Bala Bindin and the northern Burmese forces to give up a mall and try to draw the Qing around the Kangdong fort. His plan was to lure the Qing army into Burmese territory and surround them. Under the overall command of Maha Situ, the Burmese army was split into two. One army, under General Nemil Situ, was ordered to wait near Bamo, while the other, under Mahati Hatura, was sent further north to recruit Kachin and Shan levies. Using their familiarity with routes used by local hunters, thousands of Burmese soldiers were able to move through the jungles without the Qing even noticing. They waited patiently as the Qing army struck Gangdong Fort again and again without result and suffering deeply from the tropical disease. It was necessary as the entire Burmese defense, not including those levied by Mahati Hatura, only numbered around 7,000 men, 500 horses and less than 20 fighting elephants, and they were facing a force that was nearly three times their size. It should also be noted that the Burmese were not necessarily immune to these tropical disease as many foreign writers assumed, it was just that they were better prepared to deal with them. Burmese historical accounts actually have a surprising number of deaths due to disease recorded. It was only after judging the Qing to be sufficiently weakened, Nemyo Situ struck the Qing garrison at Bamo, taking it rather easily. With their supplies cut, Yang ordered the Qing army to retake Bamo. But Nemyo Situ's men form a defensive position at the mouth of the river. Hoping to take advantage of their superior mounts, the Qing launched a great cavalry charge against Nemyo Situ's men. But the river fort slowed down the momentum, and within the choke point, they were easily cut down by Kongbound archers and musketeers. Bands of Kachin and Shan hunters were also sent out to ambush the Qing retreat. Meanwhile, the Burmese were able to navigate the jungles to resupply the Kangtun fort and create a line of communication between the different Burmese armies. Seeing that their opportunity had finally arrived, Bala Mindin coordinated with the other field commanders. As Nemil Sibu's army arrived at the Qing camp, the Kangtun gates flew open. At Bala Mindin's signal, the garrison charged out while Nemo Situ's army burst out from the jungles. Already weakened by disease and suffering heavy losses, the Qing was forced to abandon the siege and retreat. Yang, realizing the disaster that will suddenly unfold if he doesn't act quickly, ordered a general retreat back to Yunnan. But on the road to Yunnan, Mahati Hatura's army, consisting mostly of Shans and Kachins, had arrived. As they moved to engage the Qing, the two other Burmese armies also followed up from behind. The disease-ridden Qing forces could barely put up a fight as Burmese armies converged all around them. And utterly destroyed them. The Burmese forces then proceeded to occupy the eight Chinese Shan states in Yunnan. Although overshadowed by the heavier fighting of the third and fourth invasions, this was one of Myanmar's greatest military victories. The Manchu-based contemporary accounts blamed the battle-worthiness of the Han Chinese soldiers of the Green Standard Army for the failure, but most historians blame Yang Yinju for the failure for even attempting such an ambitious campaign with troops that were not equipped for a military conquest. The Qing court probably knew how ambitious the whole plan was, but since the Burmese armies were struggling in Ayotthaya, and their own poor opinion of the Burmese levies allowed the invasion. In fact, many Chinese historians blame Yang for starting the whole war because throughout history, Sino-Burmese conflicts rarely escalate into a full-scale war. By trying to invade Ava and leading his army to get wiped out, Yang had shamed the Qing court into fighting a war they neither wanted nor were prepared for. The Burmese victory was also due to the generation's conscripted men. The Burmese army of 1766 was small. Even though the Qing army was weakened by sickness, it still outnumbered them heavily. It was the battle experience of Myanmar's conscripted soldiers that allowed it to operate so well, which is actually unusual in the history of Myanmar's fragmented militaries. Many of the recruits, particularly the Shans and Kachins, had been veterans of a Laompia's campaign against Minipur and Lao. Furthermore, they were led by the Kongbao dynasty's greatest generation of soldiers. 
Vlad Minden's leadership of Gauntel, along with European-trained cannon crews, gave them the edge to survive attacks that lesser men would have failed. However, it was also clear that this would not be enough against a truly determined foe, because the Qing had finally unfurled the Eight Banners, and the Kongbound armies would be in the fight of their lives.